Welcome back, Mudslingers. I was just admiring this beautiful bowl thrown by one of my former students. Uh, this is what we're working on next, is the footed bowl. I'm going to show you how to throw these. Now make sure you've got your guidebooks with you, because I want you to follow along the steps. The steps for bowls are different than the cylinder. So we have to retrain the hands to think a little differently. Now here's the important thing to remember when you're throwing bowls. I've got a mantra that you have to repeat over and over and over. It's this. Assume the position. Um, think bowl the whole way. You try it with me. Think bowl the whole way. One more time. Think bowl the whole way. Yes, I am one with bowls. I am one. All right, here's the steps. We're going to break this up into steps just like we did with cylinders, but there's a few things that you need to, to do differently. Number one, I'm weighing more clay. Start with two pounds of clay. We're going to bump the, the clay weight up. Uh, secondly, I'm going to center this a little bit differently. So look at this shape. Can you zoom in on my hands for this? So if we can get close here on camera, this is a shape I'm going to start with, with the bowl. This is uh, almost as wide as it is tall. Looks a little bit like a, a Rolo candy, uh, perhaps flan, you know what uh, that custardy dessert is. Uh, food analogies are my favorite. So let's assume this is a roll of can. So we're going to start with this high, high cone shape. So we're going to open it up in a similar way, but here's what's different. I'm going to stop about one inch away from the floor, and I'll explain as I go. Here we go. I start to open it up. I push the thumb in, and about an inch away from the floor. I'm going to check this with my needle tool so you can see. Push my needle tool in, pull it out, so maybe three quarters of an inch. I've got about three quarters of an inch of clay here. The reason that we want this is we've got room to compress the bottom because bowls need lots of compression for strength, but also because ultimately we're going to trim a foot onto the bottom of the bowl and the foot acts as, a, as an elevator, it elevates the curve of the bowl. It's also going to free the interior of the bowl from the constraint of sitting on the flat table. So it, I think it's a much more elegant bowl than a flat bottom bowl. So we're going to work on that, <coughs> excuse me, on that type of bowl. So I've opened it up leaving a good inch to three quarters of an inch at the bottom. And then when I go to uh, put in the bottom, fingers, elbows come out again. But the difference here is I'm thinking to bowl the whole way. So as my thumbs open up, they're actually opening in a bowl shape. There, I'm done. Slice it off, trim it. It's, well, it's pretty thick. So now I've got this nice curve in here. I'm going to go ahead and compress the curve. Left hand on the inside again, but instead of going up to 12 o'clock, I'm going to start in the center and move back towards 6 o'clock. So here I go. Push down, come back to 6 o'clock. Push down, come back to 6 o'clock. So I'm just gen gradually widening the bowl shape out. So this type of bowl will have a curved bottom. It's really important that you maintain the curve on the bottom uh, because later on when we trim it, we don't want a flat bottom that will uh, wind up being too thin. At this stage, the floor is now about half an inch thick. So I've compressed it down so we're about a half an inch thick if I show you that on my needle tool. <clears throat> so the curve of this bowl has now been put into place, a little bit like the foundation of a building. I'm establishing the, the base of the building and then we're going to build up from there. So here's also what's different about the bowl. Can I tell you bowls are easier? The first two steps that I'm going to, I'm going to do on this uh, are what I call the big squeeze. Remember the first step with the cylinders 
can call a volcano, but uh, we're really not concerned with going up in a cone shape for a bowl because bowls ultimately are going to be flared at the top. So I'm going to start with a straight squeeze and then one more squeeze that's slightly more V-shaped. Uh, you'll see this as I demonstrate. So here's how the big squeeze works. I put my left hand into the curve. My whole hand is going in there. Don't just put a finger or, or like this, but put your whole hand in there, let it rest on the curve. It's guarding the curve so the curve doesn't go away. I'll take my right hand, press in deep at the base of it, so I've got a big fat ring right here. And then all I do is this. I'm going to squeeze between my inside and outside hand straight up, and I'm going to stop once the rim is about as thick as a slice of bread. Looks like this. Here we go. Ready? One, two. Taper, 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 squeeze, 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 slice of bread. Stop. Compress that rim. So you see we have something that looks cylindrical right now, but it has a curved, a curve on the inside. Now there's still quite a bit of clay here at the bottom. If I, in fact, if I use my fingers like a micrometer, a measuring device, you can see it's still about an inch thick down here at the bottom. So I'm going to do another of the big squeezes. I'm going to push in, squeeze that wall up, and this time it'll start to take on a little more of a V shape. Left hand again on the inside, press it against the curve, push in at the base. See that big lump right there? I'm going to squeeze that lump. Here it goes. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. It's not raising the bubble, just squeezing. Taper, taper, taper. Still a slice of bread up here at the top. So we have a slightly more V shape. Now the wall is thin enough that I can start to do the more familiar movement, you know, is raise the bubble. So I'm going to put my put a notch in here at the base, and this time I'm going to start to raise the bubble to get some height. Now here's the thing you need to remember about bowls. Keep the bowl V-shaped as long as you want height. And once you've got as much, as much height as you can get, then you can worry about shaping the bowl uh, to get the curve that you want. But as long as you want to go up and get it taller, make, keep it V-shaped, that's stronger. The converse is also true, and that is if it gets round too soon, it will lose strength. And the way to remedy that is to use your rib to push it back into the V shape. So let's go ahead and raise the bubble here. I'm going to make a notch, lift up a little bit. Now let me just pause here to mention what I did. <coughs> because the bowl has a thicker floor, I need to bring that notch up a little bit higher before I start to raise it. When we're doing a cylinder, we're only about a quarter of an inch from the floor, so when I make a notch, I can raise it immediately. But the bowl is elevating your fingers on the inside, so I'm going to make a notch, raise that notch up about a quarter of an inch before I start to pull it, to raise it like a bubble. So there's my shadow. See the shadow there? And then lift up. This time I'm leaning backwards a teeny bit to make it a little wider. There. Still see the V-shape? Now it's V-shaped, but the inside, the very bottom, is still bowl-shaped. I'm still thinking bowl the whole way. I've still got a bowl shape at the very base. I've still got enough clay, clay down here that I can make another notch. Now, as the base gets narrow, go ahead and nudge some of the clay from the inside to help form the bubble. So that would look like this. Here we go. Push in a bit from the base, nudge it out a little bit to form the shadow, then raise that one as well. Here we go. Up, 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 up. Gradually getting thinner and more V-shaped. And I think maybe we've got one more pull before the bowl is telling me it's had enough. Here we go. One more. This time I'm pushing from the inside. The curve of the bowl on the inside is still down there. I'm still going V-shaped because I'm after height. This is about the limit for two pounds of clay. At this point, I'm going to mop out any water. I can begin shaping this uh, into a hemisphere shape or a rounded shape. I'm going to use the short side of the rib because that will fit underneath the, the rim of the bowl more easily instead of the long part of the rib because that's going to see it doesn't want to fit down in here. And then I'm going to lean over sideways and then I'm going to use the rib to work the profile. Here we go. Left hand on the inside, gradually pushing into the curve. And I'm slowly coaxing the, the bowl out until it's rounded.
Now, one other good rule of thumb. It's more important that the inside of the bowl be round than the outside of the bowl to be rounded and perfect. The reason is we're going to trim away the excess clay later on. And on the inside, you won't be able to trim it. So you're going to make sure the inside is really nice. And if necessary, trim the outside to match that curve. So one little bit more of uh, shaping, and I'm done with this one. You may also notice that the wheel has slowed down quite a bit. So as you're throwing a bowl on the wheel, gradually drop the speed of the wheel down as you're throwing, because centrifugal force is going to want to flare that bowl way out. So if I go really fast, I won't be able to control it. So slow the wheel down as you approach those last few steps. <clears throat> All right, for removing it from the wheel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sharpened stick and I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch notch here at the base. Uh, I want to reduce the, how much suction cup effect uh, the bowl has on the wheel so that I can remove it more easily. And I'll also be trimming it later, so it's okay if I make a deeper notch. Grab the wire, pass through, and then here's the trick for removing this from the wheel. Now you might think that normally we'd pick it up like this, but it, that, this will tend to cause the bowl to oval quite a bit. So instead, I'm going to take two fingers, come down low here where all that support clay is, tip the pot, and it lifts off. See that? And then I can set this off onto my board and give it a little nudge if I pulled it out of oval. Can you see me okay? <laughs> if I have dented the inside by accident by, by putting my fingers down there, it's really easy just to sweep your thumb or your finger around at the base to correct it. Okay, let's take a look at the cross section so you can see what we've done. Okay, so take a look at the cross section here and you'll see where the extra clay is. So the wall is about a quarter of an inch, which is the goal. But down here at the foot section, you'll see that I've got some excess clay here. So ultimately what happens is, once this bowl has reached leather hard, that cheddar cheese stage, we're going to trim off the excess support clay to form the foot and excavate clay from the center and all this extra clay will help reduce the weight of the piece and give this bowl a nice curve on the outside as well. So that is removed at a second, for a second step. Okay, let's do one more without a lot of talk so you can see this, the steps. Big squeeze, second big squeeze, paper, start to raise the bubble. So after you've mastered height, 
on the goals. <clears throat> you can begin to play around with uh, other variables that are on your guide sheet. You can play around with the rim, for example. We could uh, maybe make the rim flare out. Uh, we could also play around with the curve of the bowl, uh, like maybe suggesting a, a plane change. Like ready to take it off the wheel. Pot lifters, tip it, set it off. Okay, a couple other important details about bowls. Because there's a lot of clay on the bottom, we have to give the bowl extra time to dry on the bottom uh, in order to trim it later, getting it up to the cheese, that cheddar cheese stage. So timing is really critical. Once the rim is leather hard up to the cheddar cheese stage, you want to flip the bowl over so that the bottom can dry. And then give that bottom extra time to dry so that uh, it'll be firm enough for trimming. Our next demo is going to be on trimming bowls with your loop tools. All right. <laughs>